Hi, my name is Tamara and you are watching Things Even a Monkey Should Know. Thanks so much for watching again today. As you know, if you've watched some of my other videos, I'm not a professional at all this do-it-yourself stuff. I'm just a girl who's figured out that there are a lot of things around the house and out in the yard and on my cars that I can do myself and save myself a lot of time and sometimes even some money and hopefully now you've saved those things too. So today, actually, I am doing something that um, I'm a bit of a professional at. Um, <laughs> after uh, posting last week's video about um, painting your washer, uh, it came to my attention that a lot of people actually don't know that much about color. So um, I'm being an artist, you know, uh, I, I deal with color a lot on a regular basis. and. I decided that today it would be very worthwhile to give you a crash course in color theory. So nothing hard, just something that gives you a better understanding of how color works and maybe it'll help you understand better how to use it. So uh, let's get started. So are you excited to learn about color? Because I'm super excited to tell you about it. We're just going to go over the basics of color today. Um, we could get into stuff like tertiaries and color triads and analogous and monochromatic and all that stuff. We're not going to because to me it's really important that you just have a very basic understanding of color. So um, the first thing that you need to know is that there are what's called three primary colors. And those primary colors are red, whoops, ha, red, yellow, and blue. So the question would be, why are these called primary colors? And there are two answers to that. Um, the first is that primary colors are colors which cannot be made by mixing any other color. So you cannot make red, period. You can't do it. Um, the second reason is that the primary colors are the colors that you use to uh, mix every other color in the spectrum. And of course that's in theory, but really theory works pretty well. So if you have a pure red, a pure yellow, and a pure blue, then you can mix any color that you can think of. So that sounds pretty crazy, doesn't it? But it's pretty true. So <clears throat> we have our primaries, red, yellow, blue. Now the next color set that we want to learn about is what's called secondary colors. Secondary colors are made by mixing two primaries together. So if I mix, say, red, which is a very strong color, and yellow, which is not such a strong color, so I should not have taken it from that side, red and yellow mix to make orange every time. Now, depending on what color orange you are looking for, um, if you wanted more of a red orange, you would put more red in it, obviously. If you wanted more of a yellow orange, you would put more yellow. And <laughs> you'd probably not mix your red in quite as hard as I just did, because the red, like I said, is a very strong color. So that's the first secondary color, it's orange. Um, the next one would be, and we could go either direction, but I'm just going clockwise, uh, would be green. Yellow and blue always make green. And it's the same thing. If you put more yellow in, you're going to get more of a yellow green. If you put more blue in, you're going to get more of a blue green, which we also call turquoise, right? So, red and yellow make orange, yellow and blue make green. These are very basic things that would be very helpful for you to know if you want to mix colors. So the last one would be red and blue, which these are both strong colors, so we'll put a bunch of both of them, make purple. And in this case, the purple is very dark. I hope you can see it well enough. But it's the same thing. If you want more of a red-violet color, you would put in more red. If you want more of a blue-violet color, then you'll mix in more blue. Looks like that red is probably the strongest color on here because it seems to dominate. And that's all going to depend on your paint. So that means that this paint has a very high uh, red pigment rate in it. So, um, so there's the first thing. So if you have, say that you were painting a room, painting a washer, painting 
anything, painting a card, I don't know, and you have a red and you think, gosh, I really want more of a red orange. Well, now you know, you just add yellow to that red and you'll take it more to it toward the orangey side. So with these, with this knowledge, you can build on it and mix anything you want. So the other thing that I think is pretty important to know is what complementary colors are. And complementary colors are two colors that are directly across from each other on the color wheel, which is essentially what we just made was a color wheel. And, or I guess in this case, it's more like a color triangle. But so a complementary set would be, say, red and green. See how they are directly across the street from each other. And what that means whenever you have complementary colors is that they are going to set each other off really well and they're going to be the most vibrant color combination that you can possibly make. Um, and it's laws of physics somehow. I can't explain the physics. All I can do is explain the color theory because I use it every day. So uh, another complementary color set would be, you probably guessed, yellow and purple. And if you think about this, there are a lot of universities that have complementary color schemes for their school colors or universities and schools, whatever. Um, a lot of co companies do the same thing. Um, at Christmas, I bet you recognize the red and green, green set as Christmas colors. So our last complementary color set is going to be blue. Whoops, let's get a little more blue there. And orange. Well, I probably should have taken that with the orange brush, shouldn't I? I've been trying to keep these separate. <laughs> okay, we're getting a little better. That blue-orange mix, there we go. So um, that's something that's actually a really good thing that happened. If you mix your complementary colors, uh, if the darker color is going to darken the lighter complementary color. So it's just something good to keep in mind. I'm being a little messy with my brushes here, so um, there's only so much I can do. Um, but if you want to uh, make a shadow, say, or darken, excuse me, this is not a drawing lesson, this is a lesson on color. If you want to darken a uh, complementary color, then you add the opposite complementary color to it. Okay, obviously that's not the only way. But one other thing about these is that obviously you can get into um, much uh, more complicated complementary color schemes. So you could go, you know, yellow, orange over to, well, now I'm getting confused here. Uh, let's say yellow, green over to red, violet. That would be a complementary color scheme too. So it's just, it's really helpful to have um, sort of a color wheel laid out for yourself so that you can kind of look at those. And, it, you know, if you're decorating or you're wanting to know um, how, to, how to design something or you know, how to design color on something, this is a really good place to start. So obviously, um, darkening a complementary or darkening a color using its complement is not the only way to do that. We also have the option of using black. And using black, it, just be really careful um, whenever you do it because then that means that it is going to darken any color really quickly. So if you use black to darken a color, then you just want to be really spare with it. So you can take your red to a dark maroon super fast with black. And again, it it's, depends on the degree of black which you add to a color, which, uh, you know, as to how much it affects it. If you add black to yellow, you're usually going to get kind of a yucky mud. So yellow is usually best darkened with a complement as opposed to a black that turns it kind of green. Um, the other thing is uh, using white. If you want to get a color, a pastel version of a color, which we all know, say the pastel of red is pink, um, the pastel, well, everything else, I guess that's the only one that really has another name, isn't it? The pastel of blue is light blue, et cetera, et cetera. Um, then you would add white to it. And there is nothing that you can do with the complements see if I can get rid of some of this excess paint here, um, that can lighten another paint. So white is, in fact, the only option. So, whoops, probably shouldn't have gotten quite that much red because, as we discussed a minute ago, red, the red, in this case, is an extremely strong color. 
But you can see how it takes it up to um, kind of a gross, fleshy pink in a way. Um, maybe bloody pink. No, no, no. Let's just not get gross at all. Um, <laughs> so or if we wanted to mix a lighter blue, then again, you would just do white in with that blue and you start to get other colors. So that is my very basic spiel on color theory. Um, I hope that it kind of helped you understand a little bit because I was thinking last week, you know, I mixed, um, I mixed red and blue to get the purple that I used on my washer and um, it was pointed out to me that, hey, not everybody knows that that's what happens when you mix red and blue. So I do think it's pretty important to know that and um, I hope you enjoyed learning about it today. So thanks so much for watching today. Um, I know that that was a little unorthodox from how I usually do things since this wasn't a do-it-yourself thing, but I do think it's really important knowledge to have for uh, when you do start, you know, if you get to the point that you want to mix some of your own colors. It's actually really rare for me that I get a color straight out of the can and don't do anything to it. And it's second nature at this point because I know I can. So now I hope that you know that you can too. So just, you know, maybe even get some cheap paints, experiment, have some fun. Um, get a little messy. There's never anything wrong with that. Um, like I said, thanks so much for joining me today. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please go ahead and subscribe. There's a button up in the corner up there. And thanks very much to everybody who already has. I hope you have a great week and I'll see you again soon.